So interesting, how to get corporates to behave like startups and startups to behave like scale-ups. Very interesting. So this morning we looked at the financial services industry with a lot of probably formerly publicly owned large monolithic lumbering organizations groping their way into this new world of tech and property and liquid space and so on. Uh, you're at the other end. You're coming in with no preconception preconceptions, new ways of doing things, and uh, um, good for the workplace industry that you put attractive environments and buzzy environments right up there as one of your absolute key asks. Just to kick things off, um, what's a definition of a tech cluster? Um, because I've heard lots of different definitions, and how big is a cluster? How small is a cluster? Does anybody want to kind of Give me a, a little bit of context, a little bit of scene setting. Um, I, it, it's a very good question. Uh, I'm sure we've all heard uh, numerous different um, uh, assertions of, of really what makes a cluster. Um, I think it, it can be looked at in a number of different ways um, in terms of the size of it or, or what it is. We've, we've all seen uh, government initiatives and things like that trying to create cluster very much with a, uh, a planned outlook and we've seen clusters like the one Tech Hub is based in in, um, in the Old Street area of London just become uh, created organically. Uh, I think the most important element um, of, of any cluster, tech clusters included, is all the different elements that are coming in to coalesce and create something greater than the sum of its parts. And that's really what creates that sense of excitement, what creates the opportunities to do things that you might not have been otherwise able to do before in a more traditional, sort of linear environment, as it were. So Duncan, you work with big corporates, but you work with tech startups. So mm -hmm. when, when the word cluster is mentioned to you, what, what, what kind of <coughs> design and architectural reflexes uh, well, it was interesting to mind. because that, that was a question that was asked outside. What is a cluster? And uh, I looked out the window and I said, well, we're actually sitting on one of the biggest financial clusters in Europe. Um, and actually, we're in a city which is a, a cluster. Um, and actually, if you look back, civilization itself is built on clustering around shared endeavor, shared activities. I think what's very interesting about uh, London at the moment, and actually this sort of uh, uh, rapid uh, recognition of the value that it brings to, to our economy and shaping and rechanging <coughs> things, is actually the, f the foundation blocks, if you like, of London around finance, insurance, and uh, retail, and uh, hospitality, and, and all those, uh, those traditional industries are being innovated by these seeded clusters that sit within them. I think Level 39 is a great example of something which is building on fintech, which is the primary activity of everyone here, but looking at it in a completely different way. And I think for us, what's very really interesting <coughs> is being able to see both sides of the, of the spectrum. And after Level 39 opened, what was really curious, this was two, only two years ago, I mean, we, we talk about this as all ancient facts, but it's very, very close by. Um, a lot of the, if you like, the corporates, um, particularly the generations, the younger generations, were spending time in here to do the meetings and bring people in, in a forum that was more effective for what they were trying to achieve. And I think that sort of uh, the, 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 the accelerators, the incubators, places like Tech Hub, gives a real insight into how people want to work in an effective way and actually create new things rather than just processing and automating sort of functions. And if we're going to be successful as a, as a, as a, as a, as a country uh, and, and for London, that's something we need to uh, accelerate in, in a much more rapid fashion. Okay. So, Jonathan, your definition <coughs> of a hub, and uh, I, I mean, the hub is probably the poster boy for this whole kind of movement over the last few years, and Westminster and King's Cross and so on and so forth. Um, what's your perspective on how it's developing? Um, a bit too generous, your, your <laughs> uh, claim there, but, but um, I, I think our experience has been you know, building very much on Elizabeth's sort of notion of, of this kind of emergent phenomenon. Um, in many ways, the hub with its 60-something <coughs> physical spaces around the world has, has been more of a movement than a corporation. And possibly because initially the bank manager thought we were bonkers and you know we couldn't play by the established rules, we had to kind of reinvent them. And so 
um, opening a hub every 30 days or something makes us sometimes feel like we should be adopting a kind of Starbucks strategy of capitalizing at the top and so on. But this, this feels like, um, you know, our, but in fact, our strategy, of course, is, is finding that capital locally and connecting unlikely allies. So, so to your question of clusters, I think for me it's, it's about the value of very different people um, bumping into each other. The bumpability factor between um, a maverick uh, technologist that wants to solve climate change and a VC that, that <coughs> believes they can, they can help. But what about, I mean, how many hubs are worldwide in your network? 64, I think. 64. And they're all over, uh, they're on several continents. Um, is, lo is, is the local aspect of hubs an important, you know, the geo, you know, the local geography of your hubs and, and, and the physical face to faceness of them? Do you think that's been a key part of the recipe? I think it's been vital, um, you know, whether it's San Francisco or London or Kabul or uh, Cairo, um, each of those hubs um, kind of are in a dance between, between the local and the global. So um, the, the extraordinary privilege of, of, having a, a, of joining a community, a network where your access to capital and to knowledge and to experience and tools and markets is, is global and yet, on the other hand, is deeply intimate and local. You know, this is a physical place where you can land up, where you can build friendships and access some of the softer stuff as well as all that hard things. So, you know, I was surprised, a little bit perturbed when, I, when, when our initial sort of uh, market research, you know, revealed that people valued the place um, more for the kind of psychology of not feeling alone, uh, not feeling completely crazy, as much as they did access to the harder edged capital infrastructure markets. Exactly. Right. So to follow the narrative of the conference that we've been developing collectively today, the relationship between systems and empathy, where do you think, guys, the, the tech hub sits on that spectrum? So between, between you know, really well-running systems that, that provide the kind of workplace um, and, and the level of empathy, the kind of people-centric nature of serendipitous encounter and nice and good human experience. I would say it's, it's incredibly important. It's certainly been really important uh, for us at Tempo. Um, the, the value that our members uh, get from being able to work late with other people, being able to have, make friends who understand that you might have to cancel uh, plans uh, at the last minute or never make them in the first place because you have no life anymore. Um, makes a real difference and we see it particularly with some of our uh, younger members when they have uh, parental pressures uh, around um, working on their own business versus the well-paid job that they've turned down or, or, or quit or um, that, that, that their friends are doing and that's something that's been very very interesting for us in India uh, particularly because of um, uh, cultural attributes there around having a, a good job with a, with a stable company, which is completely at the opposite end to, to starting your own business. And we've found that being um, part of Tech Hub there as a member with the affiliations with uh, corporates and organizations and that sort of thing that we have and being seen as sort of a thing that you can join, it, it tends to make um, some parents less nervous about their 20-year-old their kid doing some crazy internet thing because there's a hundred other people doing their crazy internet thing with other people who look like they might know what they're doing. And those things actually really matter. We're talking about these as businesses, but particularly when you're an entrepreneur, it's your life. It's completely your life. I think just to pick up on a point that you, you had made um, about the difference between a highly designed cluster, like Canary Wharf, required a lot of planning, a lot of engineering, and something that emerges organically, naturally, around a shared set of resources like the River Thames or a trade hub, you know, a good positioning. I think um, the quality of a good tech cluster, qualities of a good tech cluster, um, are that they are multidisciplinary, um, that they are multicultural, and that you will um, enjoy uh, serendipity. You will bump into people that change you and shape you and take your business in different directions. 
I think one of the interesting things about um, Tech Hub and The Hub have been uh, their ability to scale internationally. Proximity is definitely important, um, and uh, there, there's, there's so much to just being close to somebody in the wee hours of the morning. But um, what uh, The Hub and Tech Hub have done has have been scaling. They've scaled internationally, and that is about networks. So not only do you need um, a cluster um, and proximity, but you also need um, you need networks, broader networks, I think, to other trade destinations. It's interesting, I was just thinking about the, the sort of empathy systems sort of part of it. And when you say systems, sometimes you think uh, processes that sort of lead to defined expected results. And I think what's really curious about sort of working with, with Tech Hub and obviously Level 39 is that it's actually about the infrastructure that's created that enables a different set of interactions to take place. I think the empathy part of it is clearly about like-minded people, maybe from very different backgrounds doing very different things, but all with a shared mission in many ways to, to achieve something. I think that sort of that sense of community is built around that, whether it's in finance or retail or whatever sector it might be. But I think the infrastructure that's that's been provided by the accelerators is, I mean, from a spatial point of view, different prioritization of different types of space. Uh, and a, a better understanding of the 24-hour sort of cycle of a person and how they actually want to work. And I think that's the thing that's really interesting about what's shaping and changing. And I think that's that understanding more about the infrastructure behind it will actually give some really good clues back to the corporates and everyone else about how to foster innovation in, in the more established uh, businesses. And that's, I think, very sorry, hard to articulate yeah. because it's, it's, it's subtle. But people respond um, differently to the layout of your of your furniture. And over the last two years, we've changed and modified really like <coughs> little things, even artwork or the placement of a plant or the type of furniture that we have. It actually inspires different thinking, different congregations to happen. But sometimes we don't know how to articulate yep. that. Yeah. 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 How do you feel, uh, operators of tech clusters, when the corporates, when people who work for the corporates say, I don't want to go to the business park you know, out, you know, outside London. I want to have a subscription to the hub or tech hub. And so you've got kind of corporate employees coming in, but just enjoying the connections. Is that good, or is that diluting the principle? Or how does you that have, I mean, you have to though, isn't it, Because I think there's a thing about, there's the unfortunate situation where you go into an organization and you think because you spend a day there or because you spend a week there. So. Uh, uh, my former employer, RBS, they sent a load of execs off to Google, yeah. and they spent a week there, and they came back Googleified, and and the perception was they were suddenly going to change how everything we did, and I think that's unrealistic. It's too short, too sharp, and I think the point you're saying there about creating an environment where people can go in and experience, you know, can actually change their mindset and actually bring other people in. I mean, it's a fantastic one we see here. People coming back when they ask us, "Is it okay if I come back and I can bring other colleagues?" Like, fantastic, you know, if you want to come up, please do. And, I love watching that childlike glint in the room. They walk in going, wow, you can actually work somewhere like this. And it's like, yes, work is happening. It's very productive. It's very collaborative. It's a fantastic place to be. So I think, I think as you describe that scenario there, I think we should perpetuate that. We should have more people saying, come whenever you want, experience this. And then there's more likely that you're going to get that um, osmosis. They're going to take that back into their organization. We actually work in a slightly different way, um, but with a, a similar attitude, um, because Tech Hub membership is solely for um, uh, tech <coughs> entrepreneurs uh, and startup teams. Um, so the way we work with corporates, because we do exactly that, have people saying we, we really want to come and, and be based here and spend time here, a, a company will come and, and, and have an away day in one of our meeting rooms, and they're all clamoring to come back, which is fantastic. What we do is create programs to work with corporates to allow them to engage more fully with, um, with the startups who are our members in ways that are beneficial for, um, for the corporate, but also beneficial for the startup. It's really important for corporates not to see it as a bit of a, a zoo that you can visit and pet all the exciting entrepreneurs <laughs> and sort of, you know, get, get, uh, get innovations off them uh, in some way, but to actually work in a way that benefits, genuinely benefits both. And, and we work with large organizations like Google, like BT, uh, like HP and others to really genuinely get down into that, but in a sustained way. So we'll, we'll do it over the course of a year or, or a few years. Uh, and that can really make a difference, um, genuinely, at a, at a real level. It's just that, uh, I mean, there's a parallel with what Charles Lee better uh, was, was talking about.
talking about this morning, he said there are areas of London where uh, 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 you know, wealth actually deadens the area, the bohemian edge of the area, the small cheap cafes close down, you know, um, uh, and you know, if you would have corporate membership of these kind of very vibrant tech, tech hubs, you could, you could end up you know, killing the goose. <laughs> well, I, I think that there's, there's uh, tech clusters are sort of very generic. I think you know, in, in your case, obviously, I mean, people apply. Their their, their membership is is screened. You know, they've made yeah. specific applications to be part of a program to participate in in having people around them who can help them be more successful. I think it's different to a, a more general kind of co-working environment, where it's about actually about use of space. You know, in, yeah. in a way that suits different work patterns, and it's not about necessarily bringing together people with a very focused shared uh, interest, it's more sort of loose in, it, in, it, in, it, in its arrangements, and I think understanding that there are degrees through this that, that apply to different types of activities yeah. is also key, and I think that's back to the infrastructure pieces. I think we as, a, as, a, as an industry need to spend more time in trying to understand what is the science behind this, this, this alternative uh, way of creating ideas, uh, I think. Uh, we spend a lot of time about how to understand the processes of buildings yeah. like this, and yeah. I think we need to switch gears into thinking about uh, what we're seeing in these this yeah. new, new clusters. So on that note, alternative ways of creating ideas, I'm going to throw this open to the audience now. We've got our mics, our roving mics. Um, we've got quite a bit of time to uh, um, bring in members of the audience. Um, comments, <coughs> questions for the panel, <coughs> anything you've heard thus far. Um, if you, uh, the only thing I ask if you, we're going to start with the lady here. Um, just say who you are and where you're from. Thank Hi, you. uh, my name is Victoria. I'm from Desk Union. I've just got a question about level 39 that feeds into serendipity. I find it, maybe it's just me, a little bit counterintuitive that you separate the investors from the startups. Investors have their own kind of working lounge. Can you explain why you did that and does that prevent connections from being harnessed? No, um, yeah. Um, we needed to create a separate proposition for the investor, for the CIO community. It's a different membership um, proposition. It has, it, it, it comes with a different fee. Um, it's part of our business model to sustain ourselves financially. Um, but we also believe, um, just on this point about, you know, corporates and investors coming to these clusters and, and you know, exploring the innovators and entrepreneurs, we believe it's really important to protect the sanctity of the workplace, even though it's open space and it's collaborative. It, uh, th that side of the building at Level 39 is solely for the tech companies. And, um, and, and, and we need to respect that and, and, and leave that space to, those, to that community, which is why we separated this space, which is, is for these kinds of events and for industry thought leaders and our entrepreneurs can come on stage and talk about their innovations, and then the investors have a specific proposition that they enjoy and that they're attracted to, where they can have private meetings um, and they can take their, um, their mentee to lunch, to a fancy lunch, um, and they can kind of have their um, more private um, um, interactions with their specific companies that they're interested in. But I think it's, it's we needed to create these separate spaces because we do a lot of curating of the kind of engagement uh, that you have with our space so that we can protect the, the spaces and the communities and the activities that go on there. Yeah. Can I just add to that as well? If I just describe to you, uh, we have a social uh, last Thursday of every month. It's fantastic. In the pantry, great environment. You see the dynamism, the energy, of, and it's, it's, it's more focused towards the startups. Um, the first time I came to one, sat there and watched, uh, where I thought, was, I, think, I think he was a head of innovation, brought in, obviously, a CEO, a board member, he was dressed, he couldn't have looked more like a city uh, banker, pinstripe suit, hair slipped back, uh, about 50, I would say, he looked terrified, he looked genuinely terrified they'd been brought into that room, and I think for me it was a, a question of credibility, you could, I think if I'd observed that person, they were concerned that they were going to start, you know, how do I converse, what do I say? What's my position here? What, you know, do people come to me? How does this work? Because he's come from his organization where he is quite senior and the focus. So what we generally find is we can shock and awe people, which is sometimes works, brings them in. But also there's something positive about the lounge, which is that when they arrive, it's a calm place and they can kind of look at the furniture and think, right, okay, I belong here, I understand. This is my smooth path. 
we of course take them into the pantry, of course make them interact with the space, but I have to say, shock and awe does work, but in terms of medicating <laughs> their kind of arrivals in space, we just found the light lounge is fantastic for just a, a soft landing, if I put it that way. Okay, more questions, comments? Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Ross. Um, what, what is interesting to me is most startups fail you know, globally, and I'm wondering what ingredients or what is the kind of secret sauce that you help create other than access to finance that enable your startups and entrepreneurs to succeed? Yeah, um, I, I, I'd love to speak to that. Yeah, one in 10 startups um, survive. And um, again, I just want to refer to Sherry Futu's scale up report, which is really fantastic. It's really about the skills gap and the investment gap and, and the kind of um, support that the proliferation of startups need to, to, to grow um, and to be successful. Um, I think it's for, for us at level 39, because we don't take any equity from our startups um, and we don't provide them automatically with any investment. We hope that uh, smart investors uh, that we curate in our investors lounge will connect with their um, with the relevant startup, um, but we don't um, we don't necessarily uh, broker that exchange. Um, so if investment happens, that's wonderful. But what we do try and provide here are market opportunities for the entrepreneurs. So which is why corporate engagement is so important. Um, it's why we have programs, accelerators, startup competitions, hackathons. It's where a corporate says, I've got a budget of 50,000K and I want to spend it on uh, some tech innovation in this area. And they come to us and say, I I'm ready to engage. Um, and we create um, an opportunity for them to assess and partner with and procure from the tech entrepreneurs. And I suppose what's more important than getting investment um, from an entrepreneur's perspective is actually proving your business model works, is getting out there in the marketplace and landing some deals. Because that's when you can smack the load of logos on your PowerPoint presentation and say, well, look, I'm credible. These guys think so. Um, so we think that market opportunities are one of the most important things uh, for, for startups. Um, and then hugely important for, uh, for the UK is, is talent. So curating um, a connection with the developer community and the start and the student community is so important because and also the corporate community that's kind of um, what do they call it Escape, escaping the city and wants to come join a startup um, is making sure that talent gets into these uh, these companies early on. There are just two components that I would add to the to the investment piece. Jonathan, yeah, this, this might sound a little bit soft and um, fluffy in comparison to this, which uh, so build, building on your kind of hard edge. Um, offering. I, I think what, what struck us um, in, in all these hubs around the world, there's, there's, about, there's about 500 people employed and their job type is simple, they're called hosts. Um, and I, I wondered whether um, there's something about the art of convening. So um, this, this, this might sound far-fetched, but is the convener, um, you know, for the 21st century, what scientists and uh, uh, lawyers were for a past century. Is there something uh, softer about um, the art of connections, about taking an intimate interest in who's in the room, who's in the wider networking ecosystem, and making making the, the connections? So, yeah, it, that's that's the secret sauce. Yeah. Time for one more question. Yes, gentlemen, there. Uh, hi, it's Sam Sani from Morgan Local. Um, it seems that uh, the hubs are themselves sort of a startups, uh, and just because Level 39 has been here in a way two years, I was just wondering if you set up any hard measures of success when you started the project, and now that you've been active for two years, have you been measuring your own success, whatever that might be, whether for yourselves or whether for the people you help? Yeah, okay, so I have an official answer, and I have an unofficial answer to that. <laughs> So, um, okay, so I suppose um, um, the, the official answer is yes, we've set some targets. It was to fill the space. It was to get a certain number of companies, a certain quality of company. Um, it was to make this space work. Um, in terms of the exact numbers, we actually, we didn't, we didn't know what the truth was. We didn't know whether companies would come here. We didn't know where they would come from. 
we knew our first year was all about um, inviting people into the space and giving them great deals on, on running events uh, like the one today. Um, and, and so we did a lot of, um, we just, we're, we're very, um, we made a big investment in our first year, inviting people in, giving them discounts, um, and working with a lot of different uh, companies to uh, encouraging them, to encourage them to come in. Um, now that we're a little bit more mature, just a little bit, we're only 18 months uh, down the line, um, we've set events targets, we've set financial targets, we've set revenue targets, and, and a very clear understanding of the movement um, from a drop-in membership. Say there's one entrepreneur, he comes in and he, or she comes in and she is a, takes a spot in our pantry. It's our entry-level, non-residential membership. And then they move up this ladder um, of growth. Then they take a, a shared desk, a fixed desk, an office space of four people. And when they outgrow that, they go to the high growth floor, which is on level 42. Um, and they may take an office space of eight people in size and then beyond. And so now we have a better understanding of the flow of that and how to accelerate that <coughs> flow um, from, from being a single entrepreneur to being a company. Um, with your own office space that you outfit yourself, that you have a bit more um, of your independence. Um, and so now we've had a year and a half under our belts, we're able to set the targets. But at the beginning, we were, we were going out there and we're testing our proposition, just like any startup. And the startups told us what they wanted and the investors told us what we wanted, what they wanted over the last year and a half and we flexed it. Okay. So. Um, the tech cluster, um, lots of lessons here um, for how they're organizing the conviviality, uh, the secret source of the networks, um, great spaces, uh, access to capital. Um, can I just say a huge thank you uh, to Claire, to Ben, to Jonathan, to Duncan, and to Elizabeth. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.